This is part two of the Build the Arduino Granular Synth project. In part one of the video, we introduced the Arduino synth, learned how to lay out and drill the enclosure, and learned some useful construction tips. If you haven't seen part one yet, I suggest you click the link, watch the video, and come back when you're ready. Okay, so let's continue with the construction. First, we'll learn how to make this front panel overlay. Click on the link below to download this PDF file called Arduino Panel. Open it up and get ready to print it out. To get a nice print, I'm using a Canon MP530 inkjet photo printer with some matte photo paper. Here I'm opening up the print properties window to set the paper type for the matte photo paper I want to use. And also choosing the highest quality print available. You also want to make sure you set the print size to actual size or 100% as we want to print this out in full scale. And here's the print fresh out of the printer. It's generally suggested that you let the print dry for 24 hours before you do anything with it. Once the print is dry, we're going to use a laminator to protect it in this clear plastic sheet. Open the sheet up and insert your print. Now follow the directions for your laminator to get it ready. For my machine, I have to insert it in this protective pouch. Now turn on your laminator and run it through. Here's the finished product. Now take a pair of scissors and carefully cut around the outline of the panel. And here's the finished panel. You'll find that the lamination process makes it very strong and durable. Now grab the top of the enclosure and place the panel art in the center. Take an X-Acto knife and cut the panel around the edge of the drilled hole. Here's a tip. Install a potentiometer to keep the panel art in place while you cut out the rest of the holes. Now take your X-Acto knife and cut out the remaining holes. Speaking of potentiometers, we may have to do a little work to get them ready for installation. Some potentiometers come with this little mounting tab. We don't need it for our project, so simply cut it off with your side cutters. Now we'll test fit a potentiometer in the enclosure. As I test fit a control knob, you may notice that it is sitting a little too high off the surface of the enclosure. This is simply because the shaft of the potentiometer is too long but luckily we can fix that. Measure from the bottom of the control knob to the surface of the enclosure. 
Remove the knob and mark the potentiometer at the distance you just measured. Clamp down the potentiometer and using a hacksaw, cut it on the marked line. Cut down the rest of the potentiometers and install them finger tight. Before we tighten them down, we want to arrange the bottom of the potentiometers in this pattern. Once you've got everything lined up, take a wrench and tighten them down. Be careful not to let the wrench slip and damage the front panel. The next step is to install the control knobs on the potentiometers. Start by turning them all fully counterclockwise. The knobs I'm using are held on by this set screw, so make sure you have a tool size to fit. Since all the controls are in their full counterclockwise position, we want to make sure the indicator mark on the knob lines up with the last mark on the panel. Here's a tip. Use a thick guitar pick or a coin as a spacer when you're installing the knob. This will ensure that there's enough clearance between the knob and the panel to rotate freely. Now hold the knob in place and tighten the set screw. Finally, check that the knob does in fact rotate freely. Now go ahead and install the rest of the control knobs. And here's the front panel with everything installed. Now let's talk about wiring up the potentiometers. Take a look at the back of a potentiometer and notice the three mounting terminals. When you look at it this way, the terminal on the right will go to the positive rail of your board, the terminal on the left will go to negative, and the terminal in the middle is the signal pin that will go to your microcontroller. The signal wires on the potentiometers each go to a specific pin on the microcontroller, so we need to make sure we know how to number them correctly. To number the pins on any microchip, you first have to find the pin 1 mark. The pin directly to the left of this mark is pin 1. Starting from pin 1, the rest of the pins are numbered in a counterclockwise motion around the chip. We're interested in pins number 23 to 27. These are the analog input pins on the chip and this is where we'll connect the wires from our potentiometers. Now that we're up to speed, let's start wiring. First, we'll connect all the positive pins together with 22 gauge stranded wire. On the last potentiometer, we'll connect a six inch piece of wire that will go to the positive rail on our board. Here's what it looks like in real life. We'll connect all the negative pins together in the same way. The last pin will go to the negative rail on our board. After you finish soldering, it should look something like this. Next, we'll connect a six inch piece of wire to each of the signal pins. 
the numbers indicate which pin on the microcontroller each wire will connect to. Here's a picture of all the wires soldered in place. And here are the wires connected to the board. Remember, the positive wire will go to the positive rail, the negative wire to the negative rail, and the signal wires will go to the numbered pins on the microcontroller. Okay, we're getting near the finish line. Now we can install the audio jack into the enclosure. Here's a trick. If you find too much of the jack is sticking out of the enclosure, a second nut will help you adjust the spacing. Now take a wrench and carefully tighten it up. Now do the same with the power jack. Now we'll attach some double-sided tape or velcro to the bottom of the board. Make sure it fully covers the bottom of the board so no part of the solder or the metal can touch the enclosure. Now peel off the double-sided tape and stick the board to the bottom plate of the enclosure. Make sure you position it in a place where it won't hit the potentiometers or jacks when the case is closed. Now carefully close the case, making sure the wires don't get pinched. Attach the bottom of the enclosure with the included mounting screws. Finally, I'm going to take some stick-on rubber feet and place one in each corner of the enclosure. Now connect the power, plug it into an amplifier and try it out. Congratulations, you should now have a fully functional Arduino granular synth. I've had a lot of fun with this project and I hope you will as well. Visit notesandvolts.com for more tutorials and projects and I'll see you next time.